All right, welcome back. We'll continue. Where we left off with the previous segment was uh, in identifying the strong form of the linear elliptic PDE in one dimension. We sort of sketched out an approach to generating analytic solutions to the strong form. And then I made the point that this is not a very um, general approach simply because uh, it's not a very useful approach, I should say, uh, simply because uh, as, as uh, you know, the given data and as boundary conditions get more complex, in particular in multiple dimensions, as you can imagine, um, domains of interest in the context of many problems are not just uh, simple regular domains, right? And that introduces a further element of complexity to solving uh, partial differential equations in strong form, okay? Um, so, analytic solutions are limited and uh, one tries to find approximate solutions, okay? The first obvious uh, way to approximate any differential equation is to uh, go to something like a finite difference method, right? Where finite difference methods simply take any derivative and replace it with a difference. Okay? And this has spawned the whole class of um, the whole field of finite difference methods. What we try to do with finite element methods is, is a little different. Okay? We take a, f a mathematical approach that is fundamentally quite different. And the basis of that difference in approaches is to go from the strong form to, um, you guessed it, the weak form of the PDE. Okay, so that is the topic of this segment. Right, the weak form of a linear elliptic PDE in one dimension. All right. What I'm going to do is first give you the weak form and then develop uh, more ideas about it. Okay, so the first part of the segment, the next few minutes may seem a little formal, but don't worry, by, by the end of, uh, before too long, actually, you will be masters of it. Okay, so here's the weak form. The weak form is the following. Um, it is to find u, okay, u of x belonging to s. Now, S for us is a space of functions. We're talking of finding a function u, and when we say that it belongs to S, uh, we are thinking of S as some sort of collection of functions, right? Some sort of space of functions from which we expect to draw our actual solution u, okay? Um, when I say space of functions, you may think of, um, you know, any class of functions just to fix ideas, uh, polynomials or, you know, specific types of polynomials, Legendre polynomials or Lagrange polynomials, or you may not want polynomials, you may want to have uh, harmonic functions, right, or, or exponential functions or something, okay? This is the sort of thing we, we have in mind when we say that U belongs to a space of functions S, okay? All right. Um, we want to say a little more about what the space of functions is. Okay, and we say that the space of functions u and s, okay, consists of all u, right, such that u at 0 equals u0, okay, right, and um, so what I'm doing here is sort of building in the Dirichlet boundary condition, okay, into this uh, space of functions. What we're saying here is that we're only interested in solutions u which satisfy the Dirichlet boundary condition. Now, of course, there is a possibility of having two Dirichlet boundary conditions. When we saw the strong form, we observed that on the right end uh, of the domain at x equals l, we could have either another Dirichlet boundary condition or a Neumann boundary condition. It turns out to be a little cumbersome to develop the weak form for both cases. And so I'm going to develop the weak form for a single Dirichlet boundary condition, okay, at x equals zero. 
Later on, we will see what happens when we have the Richley boundary conditions at x equals 0 and x equals L. Okay? All right? If, if we did have that, we would build that condition also into the space S. Okay? For now, we're just saying that we have a single Dirichlet boundary condition. Okay? So, what, so let me write that. We're assuming, we're, we're considering a case where the, the, the Dirichlet boundary condition um, at holds at x equals 0 only. Okay? And let me say actually, let's consider this case. Okay, just, just because otherwise it just gets a little cumbersome to develop the most general form. We'll come back to it. All right. So, this is what we want to do. We want to find u belonging to this particular space uh, S, which for now is completely general. All we're saying is that it needs to satisfy the Dirichlet boundary conditions. Okay? Um, so, find u belonging to space S um, given all the other data that we have, right? Given u0, t, because we're developing it with a single boundary condition, right? So we're not considering uh, ug now, okay? So we're given u0, t, we're given the function f, right? Which is our forcing function, our body force in the context of the elasticity problem. And the constitutive relation Sigma equals E U comma X. Okay, so we're given all this data, which, which was the same as, as the case for the strong form. Okay. However, there is more. Okay. Such that for all W belonging to V, okay? Now, this is new, all right? Uh, this symbol is for all, okay? All right? So, now we've done something new. We've introduced a new function W, which was not in the mix at all. We are saying that it is a function belonging to some space V, okay? Think of V as the same sort of concept uh, as S, right? If you think of S being some kind of polynomials, maybe V is the same sort of class of functions. But we want to say a little more about V, okay? So, V consists of all functions w such that w at 0 equals 0. Okay? So, w also satisfies a Dirichlet boundary condition except that it is homogeneous okay? It is a homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition. Okay, if we had a, uh, we if we were considering a boundary value problem with two Dirichlet boundary conditions on u at x equals zero and x equals l, we would likewise have w at l also equal to zero. Okay, note that so far w is something we've cooked up. We've just we've just conjured it up, so we're allowed to say what we want about w. Okay, all right. So let me read what we have so far. We're not yet done. Find u belonging to S, where S is that given u naught t f of x and, con and the constitutive relation sigma equals e u comma x such that for all w belonging to v, where v is as specified, the following holds now. What holds? Integral 0 to L w comma x sigma dx equals integral 0 to L W F dx plus W at L T. All right. Essentially, what I've done is go to an integral form. This is our weak form, okay? I want to do just one more thing here. Observe that I'm integrating over x, right? And x really, uh, x, I'm integrating over x going from 0 to L 
which is effectively uh, our volume in one dimension, right? Now, recognizing that though we're working in 1D, we're really thinking of problems that, uh, you know, the canonical problem that we're considering here is that of elasticity, which actually has some uh, cross-sectional area, right, A, right, which could potentially be a function of X, okay? In order to make connection with what we're going to do when we go to multiple dimensions, I want to take the step of simply multiplying everything here through by A. Okay? Okay? Because what that does is ADX then becomes a volume element, right? Okay, likewise here. All right, and what we get here is like a boundary force. Okay, this will make the, the, the ultimate transition to three dimensions uh, completely seamless. Okay. All right, and, and A is allowed to be a function of X. Okay, so this really is our weak form of the equation, okay? Um, it's considerably different. If you don't have experience with this type of equation, it may look uh, as though it bears no relation at all to what we started with, right, to the strong form. It does bear a relation, right? In fact, we're going to show um, in a short time that it is completely equivalent to the strong form. This weak form, by the way, is the basis for approximations that lead to the finite element method. It's a, it is, it is, um, uh, it is a um, fundamental aspect of a class of um, uh, approximation or a, or a class of methods which are called variational methods. 